All right, guys, let's talk about chapter five, security in the cloud, CCSP. The first exam essential is know how responsibilities are shared between the customer and provider. This was a big part in chapter five. For example, security governance, data security, application security, platform security, infrastructure security, and physical security. So understand which of these is the responsibilities of the cloud customer, which are shared responsibilities between the cloud customer and provider, and which of these responsibilities are responsibilities of the cloud provider. So the second exam essential is know the risks associated with each type of cloud platform. So for example, in a private cloud, there are personal threats, natural disasters, external attacks, regulatory non-compliance, malware, etc. So know the threats that cover private cloud, community cloud, as well as public cloud. So also understand the countermeasures that are used for cloud platforms that will secure you from things like malware, man in the middle attacks, social engineering, data loss, regulatory violations, loss of policy control. And then finally, understand business continuity disaster recovery in the cloud. For example, new dependencies that the company is taking on, regulatory failures such as your GDPR, your GLBA, your HIPAA, etc. Also in chapter five, there's a big understanding on what vendor lock-in and what vendor lockouts are. So make sure you understand those terms and definitions as well. That covers pretty much the basic exam essentials for chapter five. If you have a good understanding on these exam essentials, you should be good to go. Let's jump into chapter five review questions. So question one, the various models generally available for cloud business continuity disaster recovery activities include all of the following except private architecture, cloud backup, cloud provider backup from the same provider, cloud provider backup from another cloud provider, or is it cloud provider backup from private provider? If you said D, cloud provider backup from a private provider, you are right because this is not normally a configuration and would not likely provide any genuine benefits. Question two, all of the following are techniques to enhance the portability of cloud data in order to minimize the potential of vendor lock-in except for what? Avoid proprietary data formats, use IRM and DLP solutions widely throughout the cloud operation, ensure there are no physical limitations to moving, or is it ensure favorable contract terms to support portability? If you said B, use IRM and DLP solutions widely throughout the cloud operation, you would be right because these are used for increased authentication and access control monitoring. Question three, each of the following are dependencies that must be considered when reviewing the BIA after cloud migration, except is it A, the cloud provider's suppliers, B, the cloud provider's vendors, C, the cloud provider's utilities, or D, the cloud provider's resellers? If you said D, the cloud provider's resellers, you would be correct because these are a marketing and sales mechanism, not an operational dependency. Question four, the cloud customer will have the most control of their data and systems and the cloud provider will have the least amount of responsibility in which of the computing arrangements. Is it infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, or community cloud? If you said A, infrastructure as a service, you would be correct. Question five, a poorly negotiated cloud service contract could result in all of the following detrimental effects except for what? Vendor lock-in, 
malware on favorable terms or is it lack of necessary services if you said b malware you are correct because malware risks and threats are not affected by the terms of cloud contracts question six all of the following are cloud computing risks in a multi-tenant environment except a risk of loss disclosure due to legal seizures b information bleed c dos or ddos d escalation of privilege if you said c denial of service or distributed denial of service you would be correct question seven what is the hypervisor malicious attackers would prefer to attack is it type one type two type three or type four if you said b type two you would be correct because attackers prefer type two hypervisors because the operating system offers more attack surface and potential vulnerabilities there are no such things as type 3 or type 4 hypervisors question 8 what is the term used to describe loss of access to data because the cloud provider has ceased operations is it a closing b vendor lockout c vendor lock-in or d masking if you said b vendor lockout you would be correct question 9 because PAAS or platform as a service implementations are so often used for software development what is one of the vulnerabilities that should always be kept in mind is it a malware B loss or theft of portable devices C backdoors or D denial of service or distributed denial of service attacks if you said C backdoors you would be correct and question 10 all of the following methods can be used to attenuate the harm caused by escalation of privilege except for a extensive access control and authentication tools and techniques B analysis and review of all log data by trained skilled personnel on a frequent basis c periodic and effective use of cryptographic sanitation tools or is it d the use of automated analysis tools such as a sim solution now if you said c periodic and effective use of cryptographic sanitation tools you would be correct because cryptographic sanitation is a means of reducing the risk from data remnants not a way to minimize escalation of privilege so that does it for chapter 5 security in the cloud stay tuned for chapter 6 responsibilities in the cloud coming up next